Hey Inkscape for Glowboard users, it is Rachel and we're back with another video. Today we are going to talk about a project idea. So tomorrow I am actually going to do a farmer's market and I have been wanting to do this project for a while and it's relatively simple, but if you guys have seen these out there, um, there's a lot of um, SVGs for sale on Etsy and other places, but if you want yours to be a little bit more unique and a little bit more tailored to you and your community, I would advise that you make your own garden stakes. Now these can be made from wood or acrylic, um, but they're actually relatively simple to make in Inkscape. So today we are going to go through what they would look like and how to create them in Inkscape. So here's a project idea for you guys. So as always, control, and then I scroll in with my wheel, or you can hit FN and then hit plus. Always want to get closer to your board here, because if not, when you go into your Glowforge or laser interface, it's going to be a little bit off. So I got my board here. What we're going to do first is we are going to take our square over here. So if you haven't watched our other tutorials on shapes and text, I would recommend you watch that first before doing this video. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a square. Now, when you first make your square, it does not need to be perfect. I would just make a random square. Now up here, so I click the clicky tool, is what I call it. Up here, I would always change it to inches for me. That's just kind of how I like to roll. Um, so one of the things that you can do is kind of look up garden stakes. You can maybe do a prototype in uh, cardboard. If you haven't used cardboard before as a prototype, it's a great idea because then you don't really waste any materials. But I found that the garden stakes that I want to use that would probably be fairly popular are 0.75 inches tall and about, and I got this almost dead on, 7.25 inches wide. Okay, perfect. So I have my garden stake. You can make this any kind of variation you would want. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to zoom in on this garden stake because we're going to do something with it now. Okay, so we have our garden stake now. Something you want to do is if you want to just engrave it, which you can do, but it will take more time on your laser. And I would actually recommend cutting it instead. But if you just want to engrave it, you could put down here on your text. Now my text is huge right now. So I'm going to change it to something a little bit more reasonable. Let's say 36. Awesome. And so let's say something that's really going to be common in my community to sell is let's say garlic. I'm going to put it in all caps because I think that it makes it a lot more stable when you put it in all caps. Now, just as a reminder, in order to make this able to be cut or engraved in Glowforge, we need to hit path and then we need to hit object to path up here. And then the other thing that you want to do, you can always check to see if something is path by if you click on the second one under the click tool nodes and it should highlight in red. But as you can see, all of those are separate. That's gonna be kind of annoying to deal with later. So if you go path to combine, then if you click on the little nodes things, you'll see all of them are combined, perfect. Now, if you just want to engrave it into it, you can actually just put it on top here and then that will work. However, what I want to do and what a lot of you guys probably want to do is you actually want to take that out. Now, I'm not sure where my garlic went, there we go. So we'll take this garlic away for right now. And what we're actually going to do is if you've seen a lot of these garden stakes, they have a little gap here and that's actually where garlic comes up and is in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square. I'm actually gonna change the color of the square. I think that that makes it a lot easier. So your color palette is down here. And then I'm going to take out, I'll go about halfway down, maybe a little bit more and you guys can measure this more specifically if you want to. I usually kind of eyeball it here. And so I'm like, okay, that, that's probably pretty good about here. So you have your square. You wanna make sure this one is highlighted. Now with your other square, that is gonna be your full stake, hit shift, click. Both of them should be highlighted. Then after that, you go to path difference and you'll see that there's this gap. That's really perfect for our text now. Now what you can do now is click on your garlic, which you've already done path to text. You wanna make sure that it is on this enough. 
Now, the other thing is once you change it to a path, you cannot change the text. So if I wanted to do something other than Times New Roman, wouldn't be possible at this point. So now you can change the size, whatever. If you want to make sure that it's proportional, hold down control while you do it. If you want to just stretch it out, you can do that without it. So if you're happy with this, and if at all possible, try to get it uh, connected on this part too, just for increased stability. So if you're happy with that, what you can do is you can hit shift and then make sure both of them are highlighted and then you can hit path to union. Now, sometimes I have to go to the nodes because for whatever reason, that doesn't like to actually work unless I'm on the nodes thing. So if it's not working for you, that's what I would recommend that you do. So go path to union. And you'll see that it all actually changes into one color. Now you can change how this is formatted. However, if you want to do more than one vegetable, fruit, herb, whatever, what I would recommend is I'm gonna hit Control Z because what that does is it basically is undo. I would format your steak completely first. Now this steak looks all right, but as you will probably know if you're a gardener or know anybody that's a gardener, this will be really hard to stick onto the ground. So what we need to do is we need to have it come to at least a certain small bit of a point, okay? So the way to do that is we click on the star and then we can actually create, and I know this looks completely chaotic because mine are all over the place here. So we are actually gonna change our randomization to pretty much nothing because if you wanna mess around with it, it's kind of fun, but um, I'm gonna change my randomization. I'm gonna change my rounded. So that way I'm really not getting what I am thinking of that. So, and then I will also change it to three so I can have my triangle. And I'll change it to more of my, instead of a star like structure, I'm changing it to more of a hexagonal type structure. Okay. So then you have your triangle. And then what I like to do is I actually like to kind of rotate my triangle, make sure that it is exactly in line with this. You can stretch it out, you can kind of do whatever you want, and then I would always copy and paste it. So let's say I wanna stretch it out to about, hmm, you can rotate it around and things like that, but I would start with making a triangle. I'm probably going to have it about there. I'm pretty happy with it being there. Okay, and then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy and paste that triangle and then I'm going to rotate it around. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do this too. Some are much better than this particular method. So this is not the only way that you can do things. I'm actually gonna have that go up a little bit to make sure that these are even. And then that looks fairly even to me. I'm gonna make it go up just a little bit more. And then what you'll do is you'll hit shift, click on that path to difference. Make sure that you have both of them clicked because I actually hit accidentally hit control there. Path to difference. And then again, click that one, shift, click that one, path to difference. Okay. Now I'm not super happy with that because that's not as even as I would like it to be. So I'm actually going to hit control Z, control Z. I'm going to bring this one down slightly, bring this one down slightly. And I think that that will make a better structure there. So I'm actually going to reformat this one slightly. There we go. Because I think that that will make it a little bit more even there. So again, shift, path to difference, path to difference. Okay. Now, again, you can kind of reformat until you need to. Now, what I would recommend you do is you can do a bunch of these different labels. Um, but before you do that, I would hit control C, control B, and you copy and paste. And that way you have all of the exact same look of all of these first. So it'll make it a lot easier for you because then you can just drag in your labels and then add those in as you need to. And then you have all of the stakes already created. So that's an easy way on how to do garden stakes. 
Um, as far as the triangle at the end, there's a better ways that you can do that, but it's one of the simple ways that you can do that. Um, I would actually recommend that when you do the triangle, you can actually measure it and get into that first to make sure you have the exact measurements. We didn't do this in this video, but that's something that I would recommend for you in the future. But that is how to make our traditional garden stakes. So hopefully you liked this video and got something out of it. I'd love to see pictures of your garden stakes that you make, and I'll be making a bunch of these for the farmer's market that I have tomorrow. So thanks for watching, guys.